6.3 is what we're going to do today. I don't think we've, yeah, we haven't quite gotten to 6.3 yet. So just remind me later. Anything else from, we, we did 6.1 and 6.2 last time. Yes, just to catch everybody up with what we did. Any questions, any other questions from all of All right, optimistic fool. Yes, sir. The, I don't have a sheet with me, but the, the questions around like 27 to 32, I, I was doing 5.5 yesterday, but I was stuck on, which we had to do like. Yeah, like, so in 5.5, five, five, uh, the problems are, write this as a decimal. And then a later section says, like this is number 19, and the later section says, round your answer to 19 to the nearest whatever. Right? Thankfully it doesn't say uh, the nearest hundreds or tens or tenths. Um, so, I think a few people would have trouble because if you don't stay on track here, this is going to refer to something you didn't do. So that would kind of suck, but you'll just have to do it. So there's another little motivation to stay on track. Yeah. I did not meant 19. I meant from 27 to 32. Oh, I know. I know. So the 27 through 32 refers back to work you did earlier. So like number 28 says, round your decimal answer to 18. So you look back at number 18, you see what your answer was, and you round it. Is that the question? Yeah. Oh yeah, 28 to 31. Cool. Those are the ones that I got stuck on. So 28 says, let me get this a little better. <laughs> On number 18, I'll give you a freebie. Number 18, your answer should be 0.777. What's a better way to write that? Good. Right? What's that line mean? It repeats that way forever. So a little side note, what would this be? Say it for a little while. Point one two one two one two one two. It just repeats the twelve. It just repeats twelve, 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 twelve. Cool. How we doing? And one that you should already know is one third. It's point three 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 forever. So that's point three repeated. Cool. So if your answer to eighteen was this, and number twenty eight says round number eighteen to the nearest, I think hundreds? Hundreds. Hundreds, yeah. Then you take this number that you got for number 18 and you round it to the nearest hundreds place. And what of course is the hundreds? Tens, hundreds, yeah. Sorry to tell me, which number is in the hundred? You can't go wrong. Oh, uh, but the second one is the hundreds. So what would you round that to? Yeah, that's bigger than five, so you make that up to eight. Cool. So just be careful. If you were off track up here, I've seen a few people kind of do other problems, so it relates to something they did. I don't blame you for that necessarily. But so be careful. When you do these, it's going to refer back to work you should have done earlier. Is that cool, Jim? Okay. Anything else from that? Homework? So let me give you a couple of review problems before we finish out chapter six. See how long that lasts. You guys try these two problems. Uh, write this as a ratio and reduce.
So let's see. How do I write this as a ratio? <coughs> 412 shares per 103 people. All right, so this is 412 shares, 103 people. If you reduce that, and actually 103 looks pretty prime. So the only really way that this could reduce is if 103 goes into 412, and it does. Good. 103 times 4 is 412. So this would reduce to four chairs for every person. So if this is your concert, that sucks. They really pack the place. You have a lot of empty chairs. You with me so far? All right. And then how do I solve number two? What's this? This is the one time you're allowed to do what? Cross multiply. Because I showed you last time how cross multiplying is a shortcut to clearing fractions. It only works in this situation. One fraction equals one fraction. Do not cross multiply anywhere else. Now, the more comfortable you get, there, you can actually use the idea of cross multiplying to make other things quicker, but you have to be really comfortable to know exactly how it works. This is the only place you can directly use it. So what does that mean, cross multiply? Two six. Yeah, six times two. Okay. And of course, the 11 times 7x, 77x. Cool. What if you flip that? Oh, wait, I'll just get a total. I'm already looking forward to like that. I love this student to say that. What is it? No, I'm just kidding. So then, what do you do next? Divide by 77. And then it all depends on what I ask for as an answer. I could ask for a fractional answer. I could ask for nothing. If I just said solve this and you get there, stop. <laughs> if I didn't say anything, that's an answer. Now, if I say round your answer to the nearest thousandths, what does that mean? I have to actually divide that out to the ten thousandths place so I can look to see where the thousandths place should go. I'm not going to do that right now. We're going to focus on just how to solve this thing right now. Is everybody cool so far? Those two main If things? it said simplify, would we have to create That's that? fine. Oh. Now, simplify, you couldn't really say simplify here because this is an equation, so I have to solve oh, an equation. Yeah. So here's kind of the next, here's the next <laughs> level to this. Um, if I knew that it took, uh, let me think how to say this. Four bags of fertilizer for every uh, 11 square foot of yard. Now, if anybody actually works with fertilizer and all that stuff, notice how I haven't told you how big each bag is, so don't give me any crap about that. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do it, it just happened on the way. Um, if my yard is uh, watch out, 600 square feet, how many bags of fertilizer will I need? And yes, I love the answer a lot. Well, it's a great answer. Now, what can you set up here? And what I really have going on is one situation has two parts to it. Let me see if you guys understand what I mean. I have 11 square foot gets four bags. So that situation is completely described. Here I have 600 square foot gets how many bags? Not completely described. But if I had 22 square feet of yard, how many bags? Five. Careful. Eight. 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 I would just double both, right? So what's got to be true is this ratio has to stay the same no matter how big or small your yard gets. The ratio has to stay the same. So how does that really come out in the work? 11 square foot of yard gets four bags. 
that's got to be the same ratio. And we all kind of know this. It's just kind of weird when we put it in an equation. That's got to be the same ratio as this other situation. 600 square foot a yard gets x bags. And now it's just like number two over there, right? Yeah. So these are word problems, but they're nowhere near as word problemy as the ones we did before. Yes, it's an edge. Should we solve that? Yes, yeah, exactly. So we have to solve this. Can we? Are we going to? Like yes. Right You're going to do it right now. So how do I solve this? <laughs> yeah, cross multiply just like we did in number two. Could you not simplify four and six hundred first, or is that like that? Yeah, I know what you mean. So, I, what would you do to simplify these? Well, they both go into I'm really glad you're saying this, by the way, because this happens a lot. This is a common mistake. Uh, if I had this <laughs> over something, if I had this, what am I allowed to do with these? Why am I allowed to do that? Because I'm multiplying, and those are on the top and bottom, so that's right. division. So those cancel. Here, they're not even together. I got this on this side equals that on that side. So I'm really glad you said it, because a lot of people do that all the time. Our brains go, oh, I can make that number a lot smaller. Yeah, let me do it. No, you can't. You're supposed to multiply 4 times 600, right? So you cannot reduce those. They're not even together. They're not this. One's on one side, the other's on the other side. They can't directly do anything to each other. We know that. How, could you, how do I get the four on that side? I would multiply both sides by four. And that's why it does multiply. So what do I get here? 11x. Careful now, what are we doing with these numbers? Multiplying. In fact, it's called cross multiply. You can't go wrong. So you have to do four times 600. 24, because 4 times 6 24. Slap a couple zeros on there. And then the last step almost always is divide. So I get x equals 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 8, blah, blah. Repeating. Yeah, I guess. So what would you actually go buy then? What would make sense physically to go buy? Two, I'll accept a couple answers. 219 I would accept. 220 I would accept just to cover your ass in case some fertilizer <laughs> spills somewhere. Are you with me? Or you lose a bag on the way home or something? Falls out the truck. Somebody grabs it on the way by. Fertilizer. <laughs> it happens. But this, you could say 219. You wouldn't get 218 bags, because would that be enough? No. No. So you can round up to 219. This is a really good situation. Guys, <coughs> really good example of how rounding does not always have to be. I mean, this is more like what makes physical sense. i got to round up, so I have it up. If you round down, you technically don't have enough. It has to be a little more than 218, so I make it 219. How are we doing so far? Is that all right? Let's do one more, and I'll let you guys try some on your own. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Oh. This is neat. So number nine from the homework says. Code says that there has to be actually a human factors expert. So when you're developing a classroom, this is this is section 63. It says you have 30 student no, sorry, nine square feet of floor space. For every student. Now, obviously, you've been in the classrooms here. We are not there. In fact, 
try to pack them in as well as we can, considering everything. How do I set that up as a ratio? Nine over one. Yeah, nine square feet to one student. And then it says, find the floor space that stu 30 students would require, the total floor space that 30 students would require. So how do I set up what goes over here? Where would the X have to go? Good, because that's what I don't know. It's got to stay square feet to student. You can't suddenly reverse it. That's when you start making rooms this big for 30 students. Not good, because you reversed it. It went the other way than what it should have. So over here, I, I have 30 students, but I don't know how many square feet they're going to need. And this is a really nice problem to solve, because there's a few ones in this problem. Right? There's a one there, and there's a one coefficient there. So when you cross multiply, you're done. So you have to do 30 times 9. Yeah, 270. 1 times x. <laughs> yeah, x. So x is 270 <laughs> square feet. Good. Because right, that's what we're looking for. x is square feet. You can always look back to how you set the problem up to tell you what the answer should be. Be careful about units. I need units on these answers. I'll be a real jackass and I'll say here square mod. You want your students to roam? Give me some units here, or else I can't. I don't know what the hell to do with it. Yeah, free range students. All right, so yeah, let me let you try out you on your own. We don't care. This is page page 428. Oh my god, you didn't that far. Yeah, I know. I felt like this yesterday was starting to school. This is funny. So it says a Cubs player on average gets three hits every eight times at bat. That sounds excessive. I think the author is a Cubs fan. <laughs> so if a Cubs player comes to bat 40 times, how many hits? Will he get? It? This is number uh, 17. If you'd like a little computer-generated write-up of this, besides my writing, I understand it. And then number, let's do number. A 16 ounce certain drink from Starbucks has 80 calories. How many calories in a 24 ounce? Did you hear me? Consult with people near you.
Mark Wiggins. Taxes. Um, what's the next step? 
Thanks. Good. 16x equals? 1920. Who? 1920. 1920? That sounds like history class. Divide by 16. 120. 120. I like it. 120 what? Calories. Good. Calories. I like it. Now, I think last time we did the classic math problem, right? I think we did a math problem. And that's, you get that all, every time you get into this section in the, a math class, you'll do a math problem. One inch is 20 miles. How far apart are the towns? If it's seven inches apart, yeah. You set up the ratio the same way. So I've just got one last section for today. Section 6-4. Line along. Let me just throw this at you, see what you think. <laughs> Everybody understand the symbol here? Square root. Square root. So guys, this is very important. This is the first time you're hitting a function. Everybody. First time you hit a function, we have to think backwards to do the problem. So how do you actually do this problem? You don't do something to 49 necessarily. You think, what would I have two of to make 49, right? What would I square to get 49? So square root is a really good example of an opposite function that you really have to think backwards because you're so used to the other way. Square 7 to get 49, so square root of 49 must be 7, working backwards. Seven. Seven. So let me go one step further than the book does actually here. This section only talks about square roots. I don't want to throw something else at you. Just because I want to. No, no. Do you guys know the answer? Think about it. Square root of 49. What number is understood to be here? It's not written because it's the most used symbol. But what number is understood to be here? Here. here. Two. 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 It's a square root, a second root. Because I think about what do I need two of to make this, and that's the answer. So what am I thinking here? What do I need three of to multiply to make eight? No, not as three eighths multiply to B. What do I need three of to multiply to be eight? Two. two. See, so any root, that's what any root means. And of course, you can get fourth roots and fifth roots and sixth roots, and they just keep getting harder and harder and harder. But really, all you have to do, if I put down here the fourth root, just to freak us all out, of 81, all you really would have to do. Yeah, 81 is 9 times 9. Now, this is a fourth root. What's it looking for? What does it take? Four of to multiply. Yeah. Three times three times three times three. That's awesome. So the fourth root of 81 must be three because it takes four threes to multiply to be 81. That's the whole idea of any root. I wanted to go a little further than the book does because that's the complete picture now. That's why square roots work the way they do. What does it take two of to make this? What does it take three of to make this? When you multiply, all right? So square rooting is sort of the opposite of repeated multiplying. It kind of breaks it back down. Cool? Now, just to make sure you guys understand, there will only be square roots in this section. This is me being my crazy self, showing a little bit more. But there will only be this kind of thing. So let me throw this at you. Yeah, the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 81? 9. Nine. Cool. Now be real careful. If I said reduce this, if I said reduce this, what's the correct answer? 
Not you cannot reduce it, thank you. Not You're not allowed to square root the top and bottom of something to reduce it. You have to divide the top and bottom by something, right? So the minute we start looking at square rooting fractions, people start reducing things like this. Oh yeah, it's five, no it's not, right? Five ninths would be times nine times nine would be 4581s, not 2581s. You guess, yeah, so be real careful with that. But this problem said, take the square root of this, so that's cool. I can take the square root of that, no problem. Now what is wrong with this question here? I like it. So the new thing is there's a negative. Why is that wrong? If you think the answer is four, why is that not right? Does it take two fours to multiply to be negative 16? No. So if you think it's negative four, what do two negative fours multiply to be? Oh, shit. So this, oh, the teacher said shit, damn. This is something called, you're going to love this. This is not a real number. This is called, this, and I hate the fact they use this word, but it's too bad. This is called an imaginary number. This is a not real. <laughs> Why is it not real? Because there's no real number that multiplies by itself to make negative 16, right? If you take a number times itself, they'll both have the same sign. Two negatives make a positive, two positives make a positive, and too bad. So at the end of Math 90, or maybe near the beginning of Math 110, depending on your teacher, or 103, wherever you want to go, you're going to talk about the not real numbers, unfortunately named imaginary numbers. So that's as much as I'll talk about it right here. If you do see this, all you have to say is that that's not real. Let me look. Okay. So here's. Can somebody? Don't touch your calculator. So if I'm negative, can we? But it's got to be the same number times itself, and that's why it won't work. So four times negative four is not the same number times itself. It it's never four be negative four. Can somebody tell me between what two numbers would this square root be? Between what two numbers? Like between four and five, between ten and eleven. Why seven and eight? Good. Because if it was if it was square root of forty nine, that would be seven. And if it was square root of 64, that would be 8. eight. So square root of 58 must be between 7 and 8. <laughs> That's an interesting way to look at it, but yes. Now, somebody go ahead and touch your calculator. What is the square root of 58? Do you guys know where your square root button is? It depends on your calculator. Of course, some of you guys gave me back the calculator I gave you, so. Do you guys get that? Nope. Does everybody see where the square root button is? Yeah. Does anybody not? So if you hit like 49, so put in there, put in there, yeah, 58. All right, how are we doing so far? Okay, so one last idea. And this is an idea, I think I put this picture up on the um, homework sheet, I think. This picture here. Right, find x and so this. It's right there. So, what was the idea behind this to really do this correctly? So, what I really should say is find the value of x. And you say, well, it's got intrinsic value. No, John. The number that makes this work. So, what is the idea behind this? What kind of an image is this? What kind of a geometrical shape? Triangle. Triangle, and more specifically, right angle triangle. So, what right triangle? 
And right triangles behave very specifically about their sides. Who knows the general rule for right triangle? Yeah. C's got to be bigger. I like it because it's across from the bigger angle, so it's got to open up and make that the biggest side. All right, these two angles will always be less than 90. Because what do all the angles in a triangle add up to be? Any triangle, if you add up. I love that. I forgot. It's like, what do we have for dinner, Mom? Food. Thanks, Mom. It's a change. Um, <laughs> what do all the angles in a triangle add up to be? 180. Why? Here's a reason why. Those are all 90 degree angles, right? In a rectangle? And so that's a total of 360. You guys with me? 490 is 360. So if I do this, I've cut it in half, so that angles would add up to be 180. Kind of with me? So that's why all triangles in our geometry, that's the only one I'll talk about, add up to be 180 degrees. So coming back to this, does anybody know the rule? C is the biggest angle, I agree. Let me know the rule that relates the sides. Have you guys ever heard of it? It starts with a P. No? <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Pythagoras. So he was an old Greek dude that actually had a lot of followers that did a lot of work that he took credit for, but some of what he did. <laughs> um, that's the real story. Look at that. So what he found out, and a really cool, not proof, but a really cool visual of this is, let me draw a little bit better. Yeah, it's not better. If I put a square off the side of this, a square off the side of this, and a square off the side of this. So here's my original triangle in here, right? So here's a squared of an area. This area would be a squared, is that cool? Yeah. This area would be b squared. This area would be c squared. And what Pythagoras found is that if you add the area of these two smaller blocks, they will always add to be the area of the bigger one in a right triangle. In other triangles, no. In a right triangle, has to be. So the formula is u. Now this one happens to be, can you imagine, are you going to get beautiful numbers out of here? Because what's it going to involve? To solve for C, I'm going to have to take a square root. And so probably it's going to come out ugly most of the time. Here's a situation where it doesn't. The most important side, the only side that has to be a specific letter is the longest one. What's also known as the what? The what a noose. Hypotenuse, I love it. So this has to be C. And I don't care about it. which one has to be A and B, who cares? They're just the other two sides. So if A squared plus B squared is C squared, then 3 squared plus 4 squared is C squared. With me so far? Just plug and chuck. Here I don't know that pot news, so it better still be C. Put the other two sides in for A and B. I'm just plugging into the formula now, right? Oh, so, far. so this is a rule that's true. If somebody gives me an A and a B, I can plug it in to find a C. Not a big deal. So what is 3 squared? 9. nine plus 16. And what's 9 plus 16? 25. 25. 25. And what's C got to be then? 5. five. Because C squared 25, C's got to be 5, because 5 squared is 25. 3, 4, 5 triangle. So there are specific triangles that actually work this way. So is the last one your square root your final answer though? Yeah. Just do one last one that, that doesn't come out nice. from the right angle, it's always got to be the C, the hypotenuse, the biggest side. So 
So how would this equation look? 11 squared plus 6 squared. I like it. Equals? C squared. C squared. Uh, this is not going to come out pretty, just a warning. So I have to tell you, like, round to the nearest hundreds place, hundreds. So what do you get? 11 squared is? 121. 6 squared? 36. 121 plus 36? 157. If c squared is 157, c must be the square root of 157. It must be the opposite. If c squared is 157, c must be the square root of 157. So an ugly number. But if you do that in your calculator, what do you get? 12.529964086. 9, several things. Yep. So round to the nearest hundredth spot, 12.53. Cool. All right. Has anybody ever, it sounds like, to me, has anybody ever heard of the thing right here? Have you done it before? You just forgot the Greek news name? Never heard of it? Does it make semi sense? Yeah, but I have never heard of it. Yeah, so it really just boils down to now plug and shut. If you have a right triangle, it's nice. This has got to be true. So, uh, all right. You know what about the question? Adding a right triangle or what is that? No, it has to be a right triangle. <laughs> yeah. The other type will be for pre calculus. Okay. Would be where you see the other type. <laughs> That's all I have. Let me give you the practice test.